So I've been getting a lot of emails and comments asking to see the portfolio that got me hired to work as a game developer on Sea of Thieves, a AAA game developed by Rare and published by Xbox Game Studios. If you've seen my game dev journey video, then you know that I had no experience in the games industry prior to getting my job at Coconut Lizard. So this portfolio played a crucial role in me landing that job. The three parts to my portfolio are my website, my CV, and my GitHub page. There are four main sections to it. The first contains what I felt were relevant projects at the time. The second section references my past education and work experiences. The third has my self-evaluated skill levels, which is actually the only part of the site that I've updated since I got my job. And the final section is my research which, well, I never really got around to adding. The first project I showcased is the Mapex query language, which is a programming language my friend and I created during our undergraduate degree. The implementation was done completely using Haskell, which, if you don't know, is a functional programming language developed to make you question your life decisions. Just kidding, I, I kind of enjoyed it. I mean, I mean, sort of, not, not really. I couldn't make the source code available due to university requirements, but I did include the manual, which showcased all of the language's capabilities. And just like with every project in my portfolio, I included a summary of what the project was, why it was created, how it was implemented, and what I felt I gained from undertaking that project. I definitely don't think you need to write your own programming language to get a game development job. However, it teaches a lot about how to think about programming languages, as well as how to tackle learning new languages and frameworks. Also, if your potential employer or interviewer has written their own language, which is true in a surprisingly large amount of cases, then it opens up a lot of interesting talking points during your interviews. The next project I showcased was Mirage, the first game I developed during the final year of my undergraduate degree. I included the grade I achieved, a quote from my professor, some useful information about the game, links to the game's GitHub page, as well as a playable web version of the game. And my favorite part, a video of my professors playing and analyzing the game in real time. The game was built in the Unity game engine using c -sharp and was designed with the aims of demonstrating usage of the Spatial Reasoning Core Dynamic, whilst maintaining structured and fluid tutorialization. To learn more about Spatial Reasoning and Core Dynamics, watch my video on how to design fun games. As this game was built as part of my degree, I already had clean commented code and documentation. Oh, and the most important part? I adhere to consistent coding standards, which is a pattern you'll see throughout the rest of my projects. From what I was told, one of the main things which stood out in my portfolio over others is that whenever I wrote code, I would adhere to the coding standards of the frameworks I was using, which as I know now after being on the other side and going through the applicants portfolios and coding exams myself, is very rare, and when found is a sign that the candidate would likely be a strong one. During job interviews, this game helped start conversations relating to patterns and puzzles, which in my opinion demonstrated to the interviewers how I think, which I felt was a very strong interview tactic from them. This is because it allowed us to have a casual conversation whilst allowing me to demonstrate my problem solving skills. The next three projects were all done during my master's degree in Newcastle, so I'll go through them in the order that they were created. The first of these I called Elysium Puzzles, which was a modern C++ project I created with the purpose of simulating combinatorial strategies of the 15 puzzle problem. This was the first of what I called my beautified GitHub projects, which included all its features in an organized manner as well as links to the Trello board. If you don't know, Trello is a free-to-use web-based Kanban-style list-making application and is a common tool for developers to use for the purpose of organizing their tasks. This was again something that the interviewers said set me apart from the common applicant, as it demonstrated high-quality subtasking and organization on my part. Throughout all these projects, I also used Freemake as my build system and Google Tests for unit testing. The next project was my modern C++ API agnostic graphics engine, which I used to demonstrate my exploration into a wide range of rendering techniques. This included different shadow mapping techniques, which if you've ever built your own rendering engine, you know is one of the hardest things to get right. I also included this demo video of my alien scene, which demonstrated every feature of the engine at the time. The GitHub repository for this engine showcased the list of features as well as the clean and commented source code. If you're interested in going into engine development, then I highly recommend watching the channel's game engine series as well as reading the game engine architecture book. I've put a link to both of these in the description. The final project I referenced for my degree was my implementation of different game technology techniques using modern C++. These included my own Newtonian physics engine, hierarchical state machines and pre-computed A star maps for my AI engine, as well as a pushdown automata for my user interface engine, and even a simple peer-to-peer -peer networking engine. This was probably the project which demonstrated my dedication the most out of everything so far, as I think I spent somewhere around 16 hours a day working on it for 3 weeks straight. During my interviews, I was asked a lot of questions about this project, as I think it really demonstrated my versatility. If you want to get started building your own physics engine, I recommend Ian Millington's Game Physics Engine Development book. I've added a link to this in the description. And by the way, if you're wondering how I managed to get through all this work in such little time, I'm somebody who truly enjoys learning and reading, and I've been practicing speed reading for almost 5 years now, 
Feel free to let me know in the comments if you want me to share how I get through programming in Matsbooks in days rather than weeks or months. Back to my portfolio. If you're wondering why my team project isn't here, where we worked on the PlayStation code, it's because it was under NDA and most of the companies I was applying to already knew I had done this, so I didn't really need to include it. However, the final project I did reference here is the Vulcan Pipeline Assistant. The lead author for this project was my friend Ralph, who currently works at Rebellion. Our goal with this was to have an extra example for potential employers that showed we were capable of working in a group in an agile manner, whilst achieving something that would be useful for the open source community. Unfortunately, but also fortunately, we all got hired before we had a chance to finish it, but it still brought a few extra talking points during interviews, as it had a direct connection to my experience using C++ and Qt in the computer vision based security systems I'd worked on in the past. Now, these weren't all my projects, but they were the ones I felt were most relevant for the game development jobs I was applying for. As for the most part, I was applying to be an engine programmer, which meant I was going to be working on low-level C++ code. The next part of my portfolio was my educational experience. For my A-levels, which if you're not British is equivalent to IBs and APs, I studied maths, further maths, computing and physics. I got high grades for all of these, but didn't see it necessary to include that information. And as it turns out, the only thing I was asked about during my interviews was my experience taking further maths, as this isn't something that people usually do in the UK. I then mentioned my first class honours during my undergraduate degree at the University of Southampton, as well as my trajectory to receive a first class degree in my masters, which I eventually did achieve with an average of around 90 something percent. I didn't feel the need to mention the specific results of my modules, but I did mention in my CV that if they wanted to see my transcripts, they were more than welcome to ask. For the most part, it seemed the interviewers wanted to know what modules I found interesting, which in my case was my robotics and game dev modules, as well as what I found interesting about them. Then in my work experience section, I spoke about what I did in my previous summer jobs, as well as what I felt I gained from them. One was about when I was a mixologist, which if you don't know basically means that I can make very tasty cocktails, and the other was my computer vision and AI security systems experience. I won't bore you guys with the specifics, but you can go and take a look for yourself using the link in the pinned comment. The reason I included both my mixology and my software development experience is because this showed that I had both communication skills as well as the ability to work with different frameworks, paradigms, and that I've had extensive experience with modern C++ in the past. The final section of my portfolio is a self-evaluation of my skill levels. And a quick disclaimer, the numbers I assigned here were where I felt I would be placed in comparison to everybody else within my level. In other words, the percentile which I felt I was in compared to my application group. So let's say 100 people applied for this job, I felt that my C++ level was in the top 20%. The one piece of advice I would say to anybody watching this is never ever ever think you're perfect. If I'm an interviewer and I see somebody putting 10 out of 10 for C++, well if you're not Bjorn himself, this only adds doubt in my mind. Being humble goes a long long way. Anyway, in this section, I mentioned the programming languages, tools, frameworks, engines and libraries which I felt comfortable being asked about in an interview. With regards to my interviews, the only thing that was asked of me in relation to this section was what do these numbers actually stand for? And my usual response was the one I mentioned in my disclaimer. Other than my portfolio, I sent companies my CV, which I made using Latex. It mentioned a few other of my notable projects, including my undergraduate dissertation, as well as the six degrees of freedom industrial robot simulation I built during my undergrad, which surprisingly was a talking point in most of my interviews. Turns out, game developers have a soft side for robotics. Who would have thought? Then on the second page, I also added a little section for some personal notes, basically summarizing to the employers that I wasn't just a nerd who sits in his room all day writing code. If you want to take a deeper look into this, I'll leave a link in the pinned comment below this video. And that's pretty much everything that my interviewers got to see, along with the source code for most of my projects. One last thing to keep in mind is that this portfolio didn't get me hired, but it was a mere factor in getting me the interviews as well as being a starting point for conversations which allowed me to expand on my knowledge, interests, communication and problem solving skills. If you're somebody with no experience, an indie developer or somebody trying to get into the games industry, subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you get notified when I release my complete guide to becoming a game developer which will be usable by everyone no matter your experience or your end goal. And if you're watching this video in 2022, we're hosting a game jam with a decently large price pool. If you're interested in joining, join our Discord and take the game jam role in the roles channel. If you have any questions for me, leave them in the comments below, tell somebody you love them, and I'll see you in the next one.